Right, using the enthalpy values for um, chemical reactions, and one of the ones that are very prominent in this chapter is the combustion. Now, combustion is anything that burns in oxygen. And the golden rule is for anything that burns in oxygen, my byproducts is carbon dioxide, gas, and water. Now, for combustion, my change in enthalpy will always be exothermic. The heat is being released in the reaction. In this example, if I have 20 grams of sucrose and I eat it, it gets digested by the body, body and the energy is then released into the cells where cellular respiration takes place. If I want to find out how much energy the sucrose provides to the body, it means I need to go find out what is the combustion value for change in enthalpy for sucrose. Now again, I will find that on the table that is provided in the textbook, for example, where they show you sucrose, which is table sugar. If you want to combust it, burning it in oxygen, it will use 5,644 kilojoules per mole of energy. The negative in front is because this is an exothermic reaction. So in other words, for this, I will again go do exactly the same as for phase changes. I will take my mass of sucrose, I will work out what is my, my relative atomic mass for sucrose. That is 12 carbons times 12, 22 hydrogens times 1, 11 oxygens times 16 gives me 342 grams per mole. I use this value to calculate how many moles of sugar do I have if I have 20 grams. So that's 20 divided by my relative atomic mass, which is 0.05 moles of sugar, if I have 20 grams of sugar. Now, according to this enthalpy value, which we find on the table, so if it's given to you in the exam, it'll be either in table form given and you have to go look it up, or if it's not in table form, it could be given to you in the question or um, it could be written in as an extra. Okay, so we've looked it up on the table and according to that, we can come up with this rule that says one mole of sugar will need 5,644 kilojoules of energy. Or actually, it won't need, it will release this amount of energy when it's burned in oxygen. I can come up with these two conversion factors, one mole over the energy, which is 5,644 negative, or when I put the kilojoules on top and the mole at the bottom. So I have 0.5 mole of sugar, that's 0.5 over 1, times by, I have to choose the correct version for, conversion factor here, because I have mole on the top, I will write mole at the bottom here, and therefore I'm going to use this conversion factor, it's the one that fits in Yeah, this one won't fit in because it doesn't have mole at the bottom. So if I do this, calculate this out, I see my answer is minus 282.2 .2 kilojoules of energy. The negative tells me that energy is released. So my final answer will be that 282.2 .2 kilojoules of energy is being released in this calculation. Right, we can also do this in a bit more of a challenging state where if I ask you what is the mass of methane that I need to burn in order to get 12,880 kilojoules of energy. So in this case, methane is again being combusted, but instead of telling you um, how much um, methane I have, and you must calculate how much energy, they are telling you how much energy is being released. So again, you have to go look up the combustion value for methane on the table. So I've written it in here, but if we go to the table, we see that for methane to... Um, Oh, where's methane now? Sorry, wrong table. Wrong table, sorry about that. Methane, sorry, here we go. For methane to burn in oxygen, I will use 891 kilojoules for every one mole. The negative is because it's exothermic. So methane is a gas, we use it in um, jets, um, to fuel jets. So if I go and look here, I will write my rule out, one mole of methane, um, releases 891 kilojoules negative. The negative is because it's exothermic um, as, as I've already said. So I get these two conversion factors, this one over that or that one over this, okay? So how much energy do I have? In the question they tell me that this is the amount of energy that I want to liberate. So I want to find out if I need this amount of energy, how much of the methane gas would I need? So it's 12,880 kilojoules over one, which is my given. This was given to me. 
and I need to find out how many moles of methane gas will I need because once I know how many moles I have then I can calculate the gas the the mass again so I have kilojoules at the top there which means I must have kilojoules at the bottom I then have to go look at my two conversion factors and I see that this time this one over here is the one that fits in properly there because it's got kilojoules at the bottom it indicates that I will I will need 14.46 moles of methane gas to change this into and now my mass, I again need to know what is the relative atomic mass for methane. So it's 12 plus 4 times 1 gives me 16 grams per mole. So in one mole of methane, I have 16 grams. So I take my formula to calculate my mass. I take my number of moles and I multiply it by my molar mass. So I have 14.46 mole and my molar mass is 16. If I multiply that out, I see that I will need 231.29 grams of methane in order to produce this amount of energy. So it's exactly the same as, as the previous question where we calculated how much um, ammonia... Um, sorry, I can't remember. In any case, it's the same as the previous one, just the opposite. Now I'm giving you how much energy you have to calculate the mass.